Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, nah, you know my dad walk on. Man, we got a special guest in here, man. This guy right here, Los Angeles. We in the building, man. I got my boy Big Hutch in here now, man. He about to go down, man. <laughs> How you doing? Man, what's up? Man, we what's both up? from Dallas. You, right. you out of Dallas? Yeah, man. Originally, I originally, yeah. but you grew up here. Your roots yeah. here now. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what they say. I've been here long enough. They say the, money. You know, the, the you sick know? ones will say something like this. <laughs> They'll be like, the earth is my turf. You know? <laughs> no, because I, I still love Dallas. Oh, like, yeah? Like, for real, yeah. Man. Yeah. But but I've, I've um, been in the music industry, and I've done it so long, so it's kind of like my second home. So I could say, as far as the music industry is concerned, and then, you know, growing up here as well. But I grew up b- both places back and forth. So wow. I would go there summers. I, you know, I know a lot about Dallas, you know, growing up. So I still have my roots. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you you know how to get off for uh I thirty or twenty and get over to another street over on six thirty five. I know how to get around if I need to. <laughs> I won't get lost like that. <laughs> <laughs> so man, you know, we just wanna you Might know it's slight learning curve, but I get there. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, people don't go by directions on more. They have their phone anyway. Right. Yeah, wherever they're going, oh, let me put it because it's just more convenient, right? That's right. Man, yeah. check it, man. So just you being uh, out here, man, I want to go back into the backstory when you moved out here, right? Okay. From West Dallas and okay. you came out here. Just mm-hmm. how was it when you first came out here being such a young age uh, and why? Well, I came out here, you know, originally um, my family is in the music business. My uncle's Willie Hutch. My father's Richard Hutch. They were both writers in, at Motown um, and composers. Um, Willie Hutch did the Mac. You know, they wrote for the Jacksons, the Miracles, um, Commodores, so on and so on, you know. Um, so that's how we landed in California because I, my father and my uncle was in the music business. Yeah. So we came out and then from there I stayed out here and then I ended up when I was a teenager, I ended up meeting Easy E and Dr. Dre and Laylaw. Yeah. And at the time, they were starting Ruthless Records, and so I joined forces with them, and then we just took off from there. You know, like Ruthless Records, N.W.A., Easy E, Above the Law, so on and so on. Cocaine, um, the D.L.C. You know, I came from when they first developed Ruthless Records. You yeah, know, but when they. You know, and all that. Yeah, y'all slid on us because you being from West <laughs> Dallas, y'all, y'all come, you come down there, you took DOC from us, which he needed to go. I remember, man, I hate to go to work. Dr. Feel Rock fresh and all crew. You know, Feel a fresh yeah, crew. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of mm-hmm. how you guys yeah. end up linking with him, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, it was at a uh, at a mall. They performed yeah. the Feel a Fresh, fresh, fresh crew, crew, performed at a uh, mall, and we like, they like Doc. So. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all picked Doc and yeah. took him. <laughs> yeah, but the boy still held on to the Dallas Cowboy jersey. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going to do that anyway. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm from the original, from the original Ruthless Records family. So when so. you, when you guys, uh, you got out here, when we getting on into the music deal, mm-hmm. but just like you being one that when that first took off, you know, you didn't see that depicted in the movie, actually. No. Mm-hmm. But, but we know that the movie can be swayed a little bit. Right. They, they can't put everything in the movie. Of course. What would you like? Like the scene in the movie, I'd go there. I wouldn't even to go there. I shift gears on. But no, I mean, really, really, what I would have liked to seen in the movie is kind of like I think Easy didn't get as much as he should have gotten, you know, because without Easy E, rest in peace, Easy E, rest in peace, Camp G. Um, without Easy E um, doing what he did, I don't think any one of us could be where we are today, you know, because he's his. His his um, decision making, far as us um, actually having something really really huge, that was his vision. All that was Easy's vision. I mean, the Thank other guys, the other guys end up benefiting from it, from you know. It. Which you know, I love Dre. Dre's my brother. I love Cube. Cube's my my. So bro, are you telling me they twisted the the plight? Not in the really, movie? because I mean, you you just said it was Easy's vision, but in the movie it made it look like it was more Dre. That pretty much wanted to make yeah, that well, happen. We couldn't have done it without Dre for of sure. Course. The brilliance of Dr. Yeah. Dre. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think Easy E kind of got looked at as the rapper who died from AIDS, and he was just a brilliant dude. You know, he was he was brilliant. You know, Easy E. Without Easy E, you don't even look at the music industry the way you looked at it back then. Like for instance, if you look at the East Coast, the East Coast was m- more doing like just rapping against each other. 
he's the one who decided to get behind really back in the reality rap. He put his own money up, his own street money up, you know, and then it kind of got overshadowed because the way he passed, you know, but he put all of us in the game. There is no DOC. There is no above the law. There's no any of these great things. There's no death row. Death Row don't happen without him putting the money up Because at the time, Dre wasn't really huge Dre was a really creative person But he wasn't really huge Like I said, you are definitely uh, hitting it on the nail when you say Because Easy for me, mm -hmm. you know, when those songs came out being an older cat I right. really rocked with Easy way before, you know, Dre was around, don't get me wrong But it, but people don't realize how long N.W.A. was rocking That's Before true. that whole movement happened Absolutely. They kind of bypassed it when you're an old mm -hmm. nigga like me you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can't pass by it. I yeah. still remember those albums and mm -hmm. I still remember those moments yeah. when an easy E track would come out. It was right. it was it was projects coming out of Ruthless. Oh man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's another part, like you brought yeah, up, like yeah. after the fact of, of them breaking up. We still had big success. We big had success. cocaine, above the law, bone thugs and harmony. That's right. Those records were huge. And the Easy E stuff after Dre left was big too. You know, so that's the that's the but thing that, that brings that up wasn't good, in the movie. That's right. That's what the answer the question. But that's so, God. You say, yeah. what is he talking about? <laughs> that's because they couldn't touch that because there's probably going to be a point where where maybe a little easy or something or you I or somebody so. put together a project that really really shows love to Easy. And I'm gonna be honest with you, if you do it, there's still if a budget get behind something like yeah. that, that's a move that's really going to depict things. And, you know, another thing that didn't get shown in there was the fact that like JJ Fad, JJ Fad actually they're the reason why the label even happens because yeah. supersonic the sales of supersonic made it to where we were able to actually establish ourselves as a real real serious label yeah you know no. um and jerry heller i mean i won't say anything about jerry heller bad rest in peace you know god rest the dead but Without Jerry Heller, I don't think we could have made the success that we have either, mm. you know what I mean? Because at that time, you're talking about 1988, we couldn't walk up into record companies and get distribution like what Jerry Heller had to offer. Yeah. You know, and a lot of those companies wasn't listening to rap, reality rap because it hadn't hit yet, you know? Now people kind of look back at it now and think like, oh, these dudes talking street, they talk street records, you know, make street records, and they like, oh, it always was like that. No, it wasn't like that. It was at a time where labels didn't even want us. We, we sold platinum records, golden platinum records, when with no radio. Mm. Yeah. So that was an incredible thing that that, Big that they didn't they didn't really give easy that shine in straight out of Compton, Again, I believe. That's that's a reason. It was a great movie. It Correct. was necessary because I think NWA is the greatest group of you know of our time, you know, as far as when it comes to like impact. Like, cause it changed the uh, it changed the whole course of how hip hop was done at the time. But how hard is it, man? It's getting easier and easier. It's a guy down in. Uh, shout out to my boy C James. Got a magnificent movie called mm -hmm. uh, what, what? What is it? Nice guys finish last, but took this and made this movie on his own budget with just a black magic camera. Oh, that's dope. So yeah. all I'm saying, is, and it looked better than most productions, oh, mm -hmm. I'm saying the talent is out there to create oh, yeah. a film. He writes, there are so many different writers I know. Mm -hmm. You can do so much on your own. I think people are so caught up in their mindset for back in the day that they don't realize the power they have right, right now to do whatever and to pretty much put it in their face in a way to where you don't have to put it out, but you say, hey, look what we got. And True. next thing True. you know, you it may a big, you know, some an impact to where somebody buy that off. Of yeah, you. you can straight stream too. That's now. right. You, you don't can even have to stream. go through the studios. That's anymore. right. Like, like with Straight Outta Compton, you know, it was a lot of red tape with the studios for that. Correct. For that movie to even come out, you know, that's why it took so long to come out. But you're right now moving moving past what we was going through through the pandemic and technology yeah. and how it is now. Come on now. All these streaming networks. Oh, you could just put a film together. Dame Dash just won an award for a film without a script. Really? Yeah, I forget what the name is. He just won an award for it. Man, yeah, that's a really good right film. There. I like that. Yeah, yeah, Dave, man. Dave, man. Dave, Dave, Dave make Dave, me feel man. like, nigga, I'm the main. Yeah, you know? the wall, I huh? seen that nigga, man, I seen that nigga handle uh, Andy Hill picking him so hard at a show oh, yeah. one time. Oh, yeah. He do not play about us, bro. And oh. that's one thing. He ain't playing. It don't matter where he at, he going to shine for his people, man. I got to right. give it up to Dave, man. Yeah, he, he have that soul. Like, Eric had that soul. You know, Eric yeah. always stood for all of us. And that's why I think we've all went so far in our careers because of without him risking his own street money to do it it was hustle money and him getting behind everything that we did we wouldn't have made it where we at you don't get 
you don't get artists in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame without what Eric done. And that's, so, you know. when, when the movie came out, it talked about, uh, and I'm not going to stay on this movie too long. No, but you're good. It talked about uh, when, when uh, it had one scene where Suge looked in the room at, uh, he looked in the room at uh, DOC and he had the thing on him and he was mm -hmm. telling Dre, you know, you don't want this to happen to you or whatever. Right. Is that kind of stuff added or do you think that was real? Yeah, moments? I think, it's, well, I mean, you got to put a little Hollywood to it. Mm -hmm. I know that's what I'm saying. Is that Hollywood, Hollywood or is that really, you know, him, is that the way he was moving or, you Shug, know? I mean, Suge, Shug, I, I will say this about Suge. Suge, and, and this is, Suge gets a bad rap a lot. Well, Suge was the first person who stood up for all of us. Mm -hmm. You know, when things were wrong at Ruthless Records, Suge was the one who stood up. He said, look, the paperwork is wrong. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not the fact that it was wrong when you signed it because we were kids coming out of the hood, the right. projects or whatever, you know. So every contract was a good contract, you exactly. know. Exactly. So, had a contract. But yeah. after you established something, he felt like, okay, you guys are selling records now. We need to renegotiate. This is not fair. He exposed that. So it wasn't anything wrong with that. I think later in his in his game, you know, in the, in the game in his career, he started really pressing really hard on the wrong kind of people, right. and that was his demise. I think at first he was, you know, he he had a pure soul, you know, for us. He was like, look, okay, these are the homies, and you doing them over, because he had good knowledge, and, and he, you know, he he was laced up by some good people, you know, to know what was going on for his business is concerned. So he told us, he was like, look, this is not fair. Some of us went in and renegotiated. Him and Dre decided to leave the label. They decided yeah. to leave Ruthless and start Death Row, which was dope for them. You know, and we all were going to, the crazy thing that people doesn't know, don't know that it was so bad at Ruthless Records at this time, as far as the way the paperwork was, and it's not that no one was getting fucked. It's just the fact that it wasn't fair, mm -hmm. that everybody had to go and renegotiate everything. And then Eric's biggest thing with with Suge and Dre was he wanted to deal with Dre direct because he had a great relationship with him. He felt disrespected because he bought a whole nother entity. And then the same thing with Doc was the same way. Um, he just felt like that. So we just decided to let him flow, let him go. You know, with us, we had to stay above the long cocaine. We end up staying um, because we had a new contract. But we all were going to go with Dre because Dre is who was kind of like if you say the head coach of the team so me as a young producer who studied under Dr. Dre um, I wanted to go with him because Suge asked me would, we, would me and him want to do a partnership going into business with him so I was like okay I was a staff producer at the time so I was like okay I can get higher up on the, the ladder going with them I could get more out of the company um, but unfortunately I end up Easy e end up offering me the liaison job at at Ruthless, and then they went on and started Death Row, him, Doc, and Michelle A. But you make it sound real smooth transition, but Dre mm -hmm. Day only makes easy payday. Well, yeah, but yeah, see, I mean, but, but you know why that happened. Uh, yeah, no, but you know what happened, that right? to me, okay. because you, you, you know sound real pristine right here. But I know that something went on to make that song come, and it was something in the air. What happened? Okay, so, okay, like, we entered an agreement, well, as Ruthless, we entered an agreement to where you had Dre doing everything. Like, when we were at Epic, Dre was named doing everything. I was doing some stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I would produce Above the Lawn Cocaine. He would produce NWA. We would assist each other like that. What happened was they all, you know, the bigger label found out. So when they all broke up, all the paperwork went crazy. So... Suge and Eric get into it. Yeah, yeah. He forces, not by, he just forced, like, oh, I'm threatening you to sign this paperwork. Eric signs, right? But it's under duress. Mm. So when you're under duress, it's not, it's, it's not void. It's so, void. Right, it's not binding. So when they went back to negotiate, Eric negotiated 25% of whatever Dre did at death row. That's wow. why he says that. Wow. And now, so that was real. That's real, yeah. That's how long real. was it for? It was just for those for a limited time. It was some years. I don't know how many years it was, but it was some years. It so, wasn't just for the chronic. It was for whatever his name was on. Basically, he get twenty five percent of it. Yeah. So when he said yeah. Dre Day only makes easy truth. pay day, that That's was a real truth. statement. That's the truth. Yeah, he was a true businessman like that. How yeah. was your dealing with Snoop Dogg during this time? During that mm -hmm. time, how was that? Because when he came with Dre, it seemed like a flagrant move or well, something. Well, Snoop came through us. Snoop and Snoop, Snoop and so, Warren G came through above the law. 
Nadal. Really? Yeah, they, they were going to be signed. To, um, what happened to Nate Dog? That was two one three. Dog. It was yeah. they, they, they all three. Yeah, they, yeah, that at that time, they were two one three. Yeah, they, they came to our camp. Okay. They came. Um, really, really, Warren was pushing Snoop all the time because Warren used to understudy with us, you know, um, okay. above the law um, in cocaine. And um, when he ended up coming, he just used to be around me learning how to produce at the time. Snoop comes and then Nate come and they're like, okay, we want to do this thing. All right, I was like, cool. But that's when we all broke up as a group, as a whole clique, we all broke up. So they just went to the death row side. Yeah. And then Dre came back to me and was like, hey, you know, I want to sign a kid. I know you was developing him. Is that cool? Because me and Dre are still friends. You know, we bro. So he, I was like, yeah, he's incredible. You should do it. You know, we got to stay. So, And I'm saying it to you because it wasn't no funk. Like a lot of people try to make it, it like no funk. funk like it that. wasn't no funk like that. The only people who had funk was Eric and Dre because they were so tight and he felt like he was betrayed because real talk, y'all, on y'all network and yeah. what I tell everybody yeah. is Eric was so deceived by by Jerry Heller, he didn't understand like he was too young. He was a he was a young entrepreneur and he didn't understand like, okay, y'all just trying to press me. Like it, Jerry is cool. If if it wasn't for Jerry, we wouldn't have XYZ. So he kinda sided with Jerry. So And that's what they showed so, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, so Dre felt betrayed, you know, yeah. but at the same time Eric told me he was like me and Eric had a real argument about this. I said, Man, listen you letting the homie go, we family, you know, we, we, we built this together, you know what I mean? He's like, man, you know, why you fuck Dre? And I said it just like that, because we brothers. He's like, I didn't fuck him. And he showed me all the paperwork, showed me all the, he actually showed me the checks. He said, but my problem is this, he want to put Suge in my face, and I don't know Suge for no business. If he want a piece or more of the company, he can have it, but he got to ask me. Cause we we started together. That's right, and and they were like bro, when I met them, they'll tell you that they was brothers. Wow. I met them at the same time. Laylaw bought me to him. Laylaw from NWA bought me to him. Me and the rest of my my brother DJ Chaos, um, my brother Go Mac, and my brother rest in peace Cam G. Mm -hmm. He bought me to them three, and so that's all I saw when I was at Ruthless. It was them together. So when me and him got into it, he was like, man, you know, that's kind of disrespectful. He said. I had a meeting with the I had a meeting with them too. Dre never looked he had his head in the book the whole time and Suge was talking to me. So that's disrespectful. We supposed to be brothers. So he said it hurt him. So both of them was kind of like you know at odds because of the personal part of it. it right. None of it ever sounded like business. It just sounded like he ain't treat me fair. I'm going to go over here with you Suge. Fuck him. But all of us was like torn because we cool with Eric and we cool with Dre and Suge mm -hmm. and Doc and Michelle A. That's why I say it wasn't no beef. So when Snoop and Warren and Nate wanted to go work at Death Row, we were fine with that. You know, that was cool. Like, we was like, okay, everybody, you know, we can't do anything because we were kind of in turmoil. Then Eric passed. Mm -hmm. So then it even went more haywire, you know. Well, tell, tell me mm -hmm. what's going on with the new Death Row. I um, it's owned by Snoop. And, and, and I have do you what, what no do you think idea. about it? I love it. It's great because Snoop owns it now. Okay, <laughs> I just had to ask you that. So somebody that's, that's a, that's a, a survivor. New thing that everybody oh no, somebody that's a survivor owns it. So that's you know that's great. And it's Snoop. You know, I think he's one of one person that deserves it. You know, like one of the person, one of the people that deserve it. I mean, Dre, he he have so much money, he's out of the stratosphere. So it's great for Snoop to be able to still control the legacy. So I want to know, mm -hmm. um, back in the past when you were just starting up, okay, in the beginning of your um, career, I know there's a lot of ups and downs in this business. Mm -hmm. Tell me about a time where depression, because we all go through that. Oh yeah, you know all the notes that you heard, you were up here and then you came down here and you, you know what I mean. How did you deal with dep depression and what kind of depression did you face and what caused it? The hardest thing I think for me because. I, like I tell you, you know, I came up in the streets, you know, and I came up hustling. That's how I met all of them. But when I, when I came to Ruthless, you know, I made a great relationship with Easy. Mm -hmm. You know, when Easy passed, that was a bad time in my career. Like, you know, because Eric always held us like in high regard to like whatever we wanted to do. So that was kind of a dark time for me because we didn't know where we were gonna go. Um, one, two. 
we done everything according to like someone letting us do what we wanted to do and right. then we start dealing with other labels and it was really and you use the word depressing because now you're in big board meetings when you could just call your homie and be like I want to put this record out mm -hmm. you know what I mean now you're in big board meetings and people are, more people are saying no than yes you know um, it's taking you a year to do an album when it shit usually only took you like three months to do an album now because you got to meet with so many people um, you're trying to raise a family you're trying to you know maintain that you know and then this, another time was when my my brother passed and you know he was my partner you know he's my partner uh, making music together he rapped with me you know and we've been knowing each other since the sandbox bait mm -hmm. so that's another thing so but people want you to go with what you're saying people still want you to make them records exactly people still want you to you know stay, it's, it's like a selfish thing okay. but they say put it all in the music because that is therapy within itself but again you do these mu you do this music put it all in music but yet it don't get the response that you want yeah, but I think I think with music, the good thing that I've learned with music is is you can't please everybody. And mm -hmm. two, because that doesn't really depress me. That doesn't really get me in a dark space. I can just do it again. Okay. Um, but I think it's hard. It's harder on you when you go through personal things in life, and you have to be able to try to navigate through putting it through the music. You know, mm -hmm. it's really hard. You know, like even when you look at like you know you might have family struggles. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to like put it in the music you know, and actually deliver something that people want to buy. You know, just because you, you're going through something don't mean that it's interesting for people to buy, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's another struggle. But I think how, if I tell young artists, I tell young artists, just do what you feel. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have control over what's going to happen, you know. And that's right. how I got it through the dark times, you know. Like, just different things. And how we came up was we came up like say you guys grew up together right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden y'all hit big and you guys are world known you're doing world tours now it's gonna be a shift in how y'all feel about life and you're gonna grow apart a little bit you know like a lot of people are gonna grow apart and that's what happened with us like when it was like basic when it was just simple doing it making it it was easy but when money came it started tearing people apart Man, you know? okay. Let me yeah. ask you something. Let me ask you about architect of G Funk, man. Okay. What's going on with that, man? <laughs> well, that's Bring a, me up to the game. Man. Well, the architect of G Funk is um, me and Cocaine. Uh, we did a group together, so, uh, funk soul hip hop band. Uh, we've been working on it. We say we've been working on it for thirty years because you know I'm, I discovered him, put him in the game. I brought him to Ruthless Records, but um, it's it's um, a fourteen song collection. Um, that me and him put together. I produced the whole album. He did the vocals. Me and him wrote and composed the whole album. Um, it drops on September um, 18th. All right. Uh, the single's out right now, The Boogeyman. The and Boogeyman. It, and, and we've been working on it. We started working on the album like right before the pandemic. The pandemic stopped us because we actually, the cool thing about this album, we actually went to the studio together and done it. Oh yeah, we didn't. You know, we didn't dial files in. Right. You know, emailing files. So yeah. So you could vibe off of each other. Absolutely. Yeah, because we always did all the records together. You know, um, well, me and him produced together all the records that we because we wrote. We wrote for N.W.A. Wrote for Easy E. We wrote, composed for Above the Law. Um, we worked with Tupac, um, Snoop. List goes on. You know, wow. a long list of stuff we've done like with different artists but dope. together we've never actually done an album together me and him so so, so that's dope man yeah. how we hey hey, hey then we gonna get that phone back oh that is yes and it's all g funk you know i'm the originator of g funk i created it you know i'm a pr young producer that created it everyone else kind of like was influenced by me the chronic is highly influenced by my theory um um g funk out i yeah, mean uh, yeah. g funk era went hard Warren people don't realize boy that yeah. was hard yeah, so yeah, that that sound is a subgenre in hip hop. So I'm very proud of that, you know, to be able to be the producer that actually gave the industry that theory. That time period was a time where it was like people don't realize that you had the Chronic album, you had the but mm -hmm. G Funk period, that era with Warren G, it had a wave that right. was serious. It was a serious wave. Right. It, it seemed like it had its spot in there. Like you mm -hmm. can't talk about hip hop and not not understand that G-Funk era happened. You know, yeah, that whole wave, I mean, and, and it's funny, we just done it to be different than N.W.A. We wanted to be a funky, you know, we wanted to just do, we wanted to rap the funk music. So, so I slowed the beat down and we started singing on top of it and Cam G and Cocaine and we just started harmonizing on top of it and then it birthed from there and then Warren is birthed out of us, out of Above wow. the Law. So that's how the G-Funk era 
end up being highly influenced like How that. hard was it after Easy died for you to really like your publishing and all the stuff with his hard. wife? I, his wife pretty Very. much, I was on the outside looking in. You know, if I'm Very. in Texas, I'm just looking from the outside, but Very. it seemed to be an agitative situation Very. for the uh, for Busy Bone them as well. Very. It, it seemed like y'all <laughs> like, see, I got one word for it. It seemed Very. like y'all was Very. catching hell. You know what I'm saying? Very. <laughs> so it was a real thing. I, yeah, but see, I, yeah, yeah, shout out to Bone Thugs and Harmony too. Yeah, it was because you got to realize one thing that people don't realize is that we none of us knew Tamika at all. Just uh, came out of the blue. Like, who the fuck are you? Wow. And then she was handling the business. You know, she came to my studio like late one night. Oh, I'm handling everything now. Who the fuck are you? You, uh, you some bitch that Easy was fucking. Yeah. What the fuck are you? And that's how I felt. But then it started becoming like after they the courts went through their thing, started being harder and harder and harder. I would we would have stayed with Ruthless, but like my man said, how difficult was it? Very, very difficult. You know, like that's why it's no Ruthless Records anymore because she's very difficult. You know, who said I heard she somebody said that they they, they bought the rights to we thought. somebody? <laughs> maybe Dan was just saying that somebody <laughs> said that they bought the rights to. Yeah, they do. It's, it's, and then it's, they gave it to Easy East. Sun. Yeah, it's the rights. It's the it's the rights to do all the ruthless apparel, apparel, okay. apparel and all of that. Yeah, but not, it's the, not whole, the music side. Wow, yeah. damn. Yeah. Which Man. is, but, but you know, it, here's the saddest thing about that: those kids should inherit that label. Yeah. You know, I think all the kids should inherit that label. So I she don't has, think she, she still has the the label. Yeah, she's a wife, so yeah, she got everything. The mother didn't even get it because they were married. They got married on the deathbed. Wow. Yeah, y'all know about that, right? Yeah, I seen yeah, they it. They got married on the deathbed. So, yeah. th 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 and, and it just pretty much took over the. Co Man. Yeah, I mean, Easy, the, the bad thing, I mean, the great thing I can say about what happened with us with Easy, uh, above and long cocaine, our contracts were up when he died. Wow. Mm. So we were able to, but doubling back and getting uh, royalties and everything was very, very hard. Wow. You know, she's hard to deal with. I don't even know how they dealt with her for the movie. Really? Because she'll sit in a meeting and be like, I own it, I own NWA, I own Easy e and, and like, okay, and what does that mean, bitch? Like, we built the label. What are you talking about? No one here is even working at the label anymore. The people yeah. that came through the door with Easy e and you, like, bragging about you owning some, like, what's the point? Like, the, you're not doing anything with the shit. Uh, I own NWA, but you ain't. Let nobody you don't license the music. You don't do nothing. So Wow. Man, I hope we did him justice. Anything mm -hmm. we leave out? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you gave a, you gave a lot of info, man. <laughs> yeah, nigga, you gave it up. <laughs> well, yeah, so when you come I mean, back to Dallas, how can people get a hold of you if they're oh, trying yeah, to reach out um, to you? If you want to reach out to me, you can reach um, you can reach me on Instagram at Master Musa Royal. Um, you also can reach reach me on Facebook um, at Master Musa and then the Real Call One Eighty Seven on um, Twitter. Yeah. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Say it again. Top three artists of three? all time, dead Any or genre. alive. Any genre. Any genre. Number one. Oh man, uh, Prince. Number okay, two. Number two. Uh, Michael Jackson. Number, number three. three. Oh wow, let me see. Well, that's a good one. I, it's got to be a rapper to me, Tupac. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the typical that's that's rapper that's in there. Like, that's, I mean, that's, that's everybody's thing. What, what, what do you say rapper. to Chris Brown? They say Chris Brown better than Michael Jackson. Please don't do that. Don't do that hey, to man, yourself. I'm just telling you what they're saying, man. Don't do that to yourself. All, I'm just telling you what they're going that's with. A, that's a rhetorical question. You <laughs> <laughs> said a big word on TV. <laughs> rhetorical, man. Man, so, man, like, like, man, it's been an honor and a pleasure, man. Whenever you're back in Dallas. Oh, yeah, can I, can I say this one thing? Also, you guys can, you can get the album, um, we have returned uh, on September 18th. Um, you can get it on our website, and that's Buddy Boy, www Buddy Boy Music, B U um, B U D E B O Y Music dot com. Man, yeah. so hey, man, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks man. for having me, y'all. Say, man, you, you you family now. When you come to Dallas, you got to come by. We, me and Cocaine go come out there because yeah. we don't. We, awesome. you, we, we do have a run. We do have a run coming up. So okay, okay. Yeah. and and we gonna call DOC here in a minute. Oh, you no, got to. Gonna, I'll hit. I'll hit, hit him up and say. Say, hey, you need to do boss talk. You got to do boss talk, man. Yeah. Say, he going to say, hey, maybe a yeah, home team, man. Boss talk one-on-one. Boss on one. talk one-on-one. -on -one. What the bosses you. talk? Because you from the... I'm from, yeah, the, from, the, I'm from the set, from the nigga. Hood. You from the set. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say out here. We're from the, the set, set, man. The set, yeah. Check it, man. Shout out Dallas, man. Man, man thank you so much. Shout out West much. Dallas. West Dallas, man. Yeah. West side where you reside. Uh -huh. Man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out.